Hey everyone, Tommy from TechNexus and thanks for joining me on today's video. Now, I wanted to cover something that I had come across a few years ago with um, an Autodesk customer in the early days of Plant 3D and for whatever reason it was decided that that project was going to be run in real world coordinates. Now, AutoCAD itself has a problem with large coordinates and this uh, I guess for want of a better term flows down into the AutoCAD based products uh, other than uh, Civil 3D but for something like Advanced Steel and, and Plant 3D it's not a good idea to um, get these models in real world it's just not going to work now what you see on the screen is something that I've modeled up in in real world or well large numbers um, and if I try and do an ID on a particular node, let's see if we can snap to it. You can see there that, you know, we've got 1 to the power of 2 times 15. Um, so when I place this, I, I just basically did 99999 uh, 12, 15 times. Um, it's just to show that it, that it is uh, sort of in large numbers. Now if I do a zoom extent, it looks okay, but all my, my crosshairs and my pick box and everything just aren't working properly and, and this is uh, just one of the byproducts I've found with AutoCAD uh, and subsequently Plant 3D. I did come across this when I was working in industry uh, on an auto plant project. It was done in real world and, and things were just failing as well. So uh, this is why whenever I recommend people do projects in Plant 3D, they do it as close to zero, zero as possible. So your projects uh, whether it's the edge of a building, whether it's a known survey point in the middle of the site, on the edge of the site, anything. Uh, I personally prefer doing it in positive X and positive Y. But if a surveyor already has a mark uh, in, in, inside that, that project, if it's a brownfield site and there's already a survey mark in it, and then that's a zero, zero, then you'll end up with positive and negatives. But ultimately, it is better to be as close to zero, zero as possible. Now to show you the outcome of, of this, if I try and run this ISO, so I'm just going to do it as a quick ISO, and we'll just let that run. And what you're going to see here is that isometric failing. So uh, like I said, the numbers are, are too large. While that's running, I might just um, do a quick search here and just show you. So AutoCAD large coordinates and there is a knowledge base article there you can see working in large so when working in AutoCAD or the verticals with geometry drawn in large coordinates the user receives modeling operation errors unexpected results or uh, general performance or stability issues so uh, again this is just the numbers are just too big and you can see also here the cores uh, exceeding the capabilities of the CPU. There are many modeling operations that AutoCAD that will not work correctly at large coordinates because of that limitation. So this is why we always say, you know, move the objects close as close to the origin as possible. So if we have a look at that line now, and you can see it does get a bill of material, so it, it is in there, but ultimately you can see these numbers are, are too big and the ISO fails. So there's your sort of, uh, I guess, explanation of uh, why me and others uh, in the industry don't want to work in, in real world large coordinates. If you really need them to be uh, in real world, maybe have a look at having the model near zero, zero. So if I do the same thing, uh, let's run another line. Let's do the same thing from zero, comma, zero, comma, zero and we'll come out uh, 1500, 1500, and 1500. And then if we do the same thing, now as I was saying, if you had this um, near the zero, zero, and you wanted to view it in real world, then what you could probably do is XREF it into other files uh, or do a transform inside Navisworks when you align this up with other models as well. So you can see here, here's that line now. So even though it is a little bit on the on the piss, 
um, that's just because of my compass but it does it does work it a lot better a million times better if you are going to do it near near zero zero so keep that in mind when you do make it um, and yeah so as I was saying with Navisworks do the transform command in there if you know what the offsets are going to be for your X and Y then do the transformation in Navisworks uh, and align all your models up that way if you need to and before I go, I guess it's also a good idea to talk to your surveyor or anyone who's laser scanning and tell them where the origin is going to be uh, for that project. And then that way they can align their survey points and, and laser scans against that origin, which will line up with your plant 3D model and subsequently structural, advanced steel. Uh, even Revit has a problem with uh, large world coordinates as well. So keep that in mind when you do these projects. Do not... Uh, try and do them in real world. It's just a, an AutoCAD limitation. It's not necessarily plant, but because plant sits on top of AutoCAD, um, do take that into consideration. So hopefully it's been informative for you. It helps you make decisions when you do these new projects. If there are any issues, feel free to make a comment in the comment section below or, or touch base with me on LinkedIn. Uh, and if you like the video, thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, thumbs down, but please do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications of my videos whenever I get a chance to upload them. And I'll see you hopefully next week for another video. Thanks a lot. See ya.